This time on Roadkill, we've got El Camino, we've got Dog, Hot Rods, Burnouts, Altered's, Customs, Merc, Wine. You can't go wrong. You had me at El Camino. <laughs> We're kicking this thing off here at Finnegan's shop where you always have to roll a boat out of the way to get to the actual car parts. What we're gonna do is roll from here to the Hot Rod Ranch in Lompoc, California. Those guys have a bunch of cool stuff and they're gonna be painting a 32 Ford project of mine. Then we're gonna roll up to Gambino Customs and pick up a 51 Merc that actually belongs to a Roadkill Viewers. We're gonna make it run and drive it over to another shop that's gonna be working on it. We're loading up the El Camino. We're going to take my wife's car this time because it's probably the most reliable thing we have in the Roadkill fleet right now. This is how you keep oil from the breathers off of your engine compartment. Microfiber towels cut up, wrap around the breather with some zip ties. And for a little while, it works really good until it gets saturated. You've churched this thing up since the last time it was on Roadkill. Oh, dude, I gave it a bath and everything. Well, check out these wheels. The other ones, well, let's just say they weren't exactly round. <laughs> so, uh, these are, and these yeah, tires these, are killer. Yeah, these make me look like I know how to go around corners. <laughs> oh my god, these Weak. are way too sticky. These will not do it. So, Hot Rod Ranch, Lompoc. The place where Vin Diesel went to prison in Fast and Furious 1. <laughs> Is that true? That's what he claimed in the movie. Oh, okay. I did two years in Lompoc. I ain't never going back. That's the way he said it. A little bit of tire rub with gear and me in the car. So this is claiming three hours and 13 minutes to right. Hot Rod Ranch. So nine hours. Plus we have to go pick up the dog. Say that again? We have to go pick up the dog again. Wait, what? You have to. You're gonna Is have there to a blanket for the bar. seat? Like, I think you, I think you need to wear a rain slicker because I'm aiming that <laughs> at you. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, you want to put her in the bed in the cage? We don't have the proper harness system. Ah, oh, look at that. She knows where her seat is. Oh my god, it's working. No. It's working! Wow! I didn't have to heave her. Look at how obedient she is now. Okay, there you go. Wow, that is a stinky dog. Should have hosed that junk off before we loaded her in here. Do not lick my face. Okay, we talked about this the oh. last time. <laughs> what she gave you? Got a little bit of French there. <laughs> <laughs> Does this stick? No hotels letting us stay. <laughs> no Not if they smell this. Uh oh. Uh -oh. What, was <laughs> what was that? What was that? Not good. Is that a protest? <laughs> uh, that might have just been her snoring. She okay. snores pretty good. Hey dog, what do you think of Finnegan's fancy new steering wheel? Does that look chewable? <laughs> it's tasty. I'll give the dog that. Don't chip your tooth on the billet. It doesn't, it doesn't chew things up. That would require too much effort. Yeah. If the El Camino had air conditioning, it would be as good as the ramp truck. This is true. It cruises good. It's got a lot of utility. Good armrest. All right, going for the carpool in. Because we can. The dog pool lane. The 50 Merc was about 350 miles north of our office in San Jose, California. And for once, we had time to take the Pacific Coast Highway and drive up the one. This has been one of our more scenic drives recently. No desert. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. <laughs> Ooh, 
tunnel. That was fun. Very angry 383 inches. Yes. The next morning we met up with Gil, Jamie, and Randy, who are the three brothers that run Hot Rod Ranch. The first visit was at their shop, which is separate from the ranch. There What's we happening? go. How you doing? How's it going? This looks cool. Thanks. You thanks. said I might not be impressed. I already am. <laughs> so. Good morning. How you doing? Good. How's it going? Good, good. Well, welcome to the I'm just going to the past mess. you right in <laughs> Right in? Wow. Wow, that's what it looks like when people make progress on a 55 gasser. I'm unfamiliar with that. That hurts. <laughs> it just hurts. Ooh, I like the color on this. Is that just uh, House it's, of Color? It's called House of Color's Lime Time, yeah. This is a truck that we built for my uncle. He's had it since he was like 16. And a few years back, he decided to go all out on it. You guys did all the body work on this? Everything. God, this thing's straight. That's yeah, really nice. This is kind of our first main, main build, but, you know, Serious build, you know. It's really flat though. A lot of color sanding. A lot of color sanding. <laughs> we hand formed that whole range and cover out of sheet metal and then Randy did the flames. That is beautiful. Cool. Thank you. Wow, this is bigger than I thought. Ooh, here's another 34. Oh, it looks a little yeah. decrepit. And I'm working on a 32 Ford project that's gonna get painted by these guys, which is why I wanted to stop by and sort of see the shop. I've never been here before. They take stuff like this 34 Ford. Look how clapped out this thing is and they're gonna make that into a real car. It's pretty amazing. So if you don't mind me asking, what did this cost? This one I picked up for 2,400 bucks. Wow, yeah. so I got offered three grand the very next day yeah. for it. It's like, it was just, they're getting hard to find, you know? It's yeah. just crazy that something that's missing half the firewall, <laughs> part of the pillar. Cause when I say he paid $2,500 for this, <laughs> you, you really have to realize that he paid $2,500 for that. <laughs> What's amazing about these guys is the sheer volume of work that they actually get done. I've been following this Project Thunderbird that they're throwing a late model Coyote motor into, and by far my favorite car here is this 34 Ford that Gil picked up and turned into one of the most wicked looking altereds I've seen in a long time. We need to find out if it'll pass NHRA tech and build a real motor for it. That's what I'd, 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 I'd really like to, especially after yeah. when we found out, you know, it weighed 2,300 pounds you know, exactly. yesterday. Exactly. That's pretty light. I have an shit. aluminum block that would look fantastic on yeah. this thing with an 871 on it. Check this out. Did you guys build this? You found it? Wow. Oh, that is totally sketchy. Just start off nowhere near the cars, okay? Oh, no brakes. No, you got a brake right there. Look, Where? Right here. Oh, okay. I bet that works good. No. Ready? You got this. I feel good about this. Because <laughs> I'm not on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there's more good junk down here. Take it off some sweet jumps. <laughs> Ow! There we go. Maybe sandals aren't the best idea. Oh, chain's off. <laughs> it works about as good as most of your cars. All right, that was fun while it lasted. <laughs> as if there wasn't enough cool stuff here at the shop, we were gonna head out to the ranch, so I hopped into Gill's 34 Ford, and we hit the road to go check it out. Is it stupid or ironic that we're in Lompoc about to do burnouts right next to the sign for the U.S. Penitentiary? See, I told you this is where Vin Diesel went. The ranch is where the original shop location was. It's actually where these guys grew up. And now they just basically use it for storage, but they store cool stuff. Their big deal is gassers, and they've got these 256 Chevys that are just original leftovers, very pure to the 60s and 70s era. I'm just sitting here daydreaming about what it would be like to drive my car. This is pretty cool because my car was completely gutted when I bought the body didn't have anything, no switches, no door, no gauges, no, just nothing. So this is the first time I've actually sat in a 55 Chevy and looked at the dashboard and went, oh, that's where the glove box goes. 
we could have spent all day and into the next one there hanging out with the guys from Hot Rod Ranch, but it was 250 miles to Gambino Customs where the Merc was, so we had to hit the road. We arrived in San Jose and got to Gambino Customs late in the afternoon, and we met Alex Gambino, who I knew by reputation because the guy builds really awesome traditional customs. One of them is like his daily driver. It's this 57 Chrysler that has a Winfield fade job that Alex did himself. And then we laid eyes on the 50 Merc. So this is it. It used to be a coupe, but somebody has hacked the roof off and put in a Chevelle convertible top mechanism that doesn't really work right. It also has a big block Chevy in it, which makes sense because the whole car is on a Chevelle frame. It's a good solid foundation for a running driving car if it wasn't quite as hacked together as this one is. So you're just trying to make sure everybody's aware this is not your work. Oh, yes. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know there's a lot of wrong here, but this is a fun looking car. I, mean, oh, yeah. I would be oh, completely happy to drive this, you know, <laughs> into a wall or something. So my connection to this whole deal is Jim Norman and I became friends because he was watching Roadkill and he sent me a message on Facebook once and he was looking for some parts and I had an engine block he needed. After that, he happened to mention that this car needed to get from Gambino Customs to the shop that he has in Paso Robles. And he was gonna come down here with some tools, get it running and drive it. Instead of him fixing the car up, we came down here to put our magic touch on the engine. We know it's got a carb problem, the oil smells like gas, but it should light off, it should move, then we'll be able to tackle the brakes. With any luck, we'll hit the road tomorrow afternoon. And now that I've said that out loud, it'll probably be Monday morning. <laughs> It's Saturday morning and we're back at Gambino Customs, ready to work on the Merc for the first time. You can see the front half of the Chevelle chassis right here. Oh, and they've yeah. grafted some 2x4 box tubing down the middle. Some really brilliant welding there, let me tell you. It runs, but we haven't driven it yet. The problem is there's a massive oil leak. So that's the first thing we have to fix. And we have help from Jim here, who actually hooked us up with this whole deal. So we can kick him later. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so here's how oil is supposed to work, right? It's supposed to be fairly consistent, a little thick. This is more like water with a little bit of gasoline in it. So it's not doing anybody any good. I am thinking that the fuel pump diaphragm is bad and pumping gas into the oil. But see this? This is... Hey, that's supposed to turn. Ah, hard to turn. It's supposed to turn. Ah, yep. This is a first for Roadkill because the Merc is a custom instead of really a hot rod or a muscle car. They've always said that hot rods are for scaring girls away and customs are for attracting them. They're all about the look. They're for styling, profiling on the street, not that much for really going fast. This is a 50 or 51 Merc, which is sort of like the iconic custom car. It was the first time Detroit had recognized what the custom guys were doing, and it was almost a custom from the factory. If you saw like American Graffiti, the Pharaohs, that's what they drove, is one of these. And this one has been customized. It's got the classic Packard tail lights, and this is like a 56 Chevy, I think, front bumper that's flipped upside down and put on the back with the overrider bar. So kind of traditional custom stuff, executed not that well. You never know really where to begin on something like this where you've never touched the car. You just start fixing junk and the more you put hands and eyeballs on the car and find even more. Looks like something we'd do. Oh no, I wouldn't do that. If we were on the side of the road, we would. You would have at least polished this Yeah, <laughs> use an Allen bolt, you know. Yeah. Remember we had that problem with the front wheels barely turning like the brakes were locked up? It's got discs on the front and I noticed that it has a drum brake master cylinder, which I know because both the reservoirs are the same size. I also know that a drum brake master cylinder has residual pressure valves in it, which are designed to hold just a little bit of brake fluid pressure in the line, but you can't have that on disc brakes. So we ordered a 72 Chevelle disc brake master cylinder and Jim's throwing it on there right now. Jim was a huge help on the brakes along with Freiburger. I worked on the tune-up and we thrashed on this thing all day long. There you go. Oh, nice. Airbags in the coil springs. Booger weld extended the frame. There's the exhaust system that does a corkscrew and a half gainer over the rear axle. This thing was registered as a truck in Indiana in 2011. So Jack, the guy that owns this car, 
It's way more legit than us because he registered it and insured it for our little trip here. So far, so good. You want to tune it up? Ooh. Wait, 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 wait. Easy, easy. Let it warm up. You want to put a light on it? Yeah. Well, it starts. Not running real good yet, but we're going to put a timing light on it and get the screwdriver out and try to get it running a little bit better. About 14, 16. Let's call it there. Okay. That's way better. Might do a burnout. That's fixed. It was firing the ignition timing eight degrees after top dead center. It actually wants to be about 16 before, so we set it up there and the thing purrs. It's unbelievable. We actually wrapped up a bunch of stuff on the Merc in one day. We hopped in with the dog and with Gambino and took off to find out what disasters were going to await us next. It sounds funky. It's way better. Oh, this is going to take some getting used to. All right. I feel like I'm driving a land yacht right now. Cool. I give him 25 yards before he finds out if it does a burnout. I heard a little squeak. Yeah. The windshield is not tall enough. All the dirt is flying out of the floorboards <laughs> and into your eye. All right, ready for the brake test? Brake test. Yeah. Good brake. Not bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. A lot, a lot of dirt. dirt. We probably should have vacuumed the turds out of this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Get some. Not terrifyingly fast. I'm calling that a 396. <laughs> Even if it is a 454. Is the behind us? I don't want to look. No, no. Is there any chrome I can look in a reflection to see if he's behind us? No. On my peripheral vision. Oh. <laughs> He's holding up his camera. <laughs> That's not suspicious at all. Nice work. Wow, that's gutless. Yeah. Turns out there was a cop sitting back there at the light, but we managed not to get pulled over and headed back to Gambino's one last time before hitting the road. Gambino asked us to sign the door, which is really cool because this is like the his top heroes that come here to visit. Number one, Gene Winfield and Frank DeRosa Sr. And Mine's missing something. There you go. They'll know you were here. Yeah. While we were at Gambino's, I was posting some photos on Instagram and there was a kid who recognized where we were and he was right in the area at 16 years old with his first car, a 51 Pontiac. So before we hit the road in the Merc, we decided to cruise by his place and check it out. Cool, how long have you had it? A uh, month and a half. Did you pinstripe it and everything? Uh, my uncle pinstriped it. Is this your very first car? Yeah, very yeah. first car. What do you have under the hood? Uh, 350. We're going to get smoked. Yeah? And is it a stock front suspension? Yep. Yep. That's got to be fun. <laughs> yeah, this is your mom's truck? Yeah. My car in high school wasn't nearly as cool as this one. I'm glad you're keeping the flame burning. <laughs> oh, don't forget your dog. Oh, dog. What? It's pissing on a smart car right now. Our dog? Well, your dog. Oh, dumb dog. <laughs> <laughs> your neighbors are going to hate us. Oh, she peed on her leash. Come here. I got the dog. <laughs> Weak. It's Sunday on Roadkill. Last night, it was pretty funny. We actually stayed in a high-end hotel, and believe it or not, they did not allow dogs. So we went ahead and brought the dog inside. That went pretty well. Had to smuggle her back out this morning. Went to a gas station and made a major environmental hazard. <laughs> wow, that's hideous. That is gonna be a trail of fire following us the whole way. That's pretty good. We're only smoking a lot. Test out the sway bars. Everybody lean. Whoa. Can I get a GPS reading? Tell me how fast I'm going. I'll be driving by engine noise from now on. We have no tachometer or speedometer. 
Ooh, getting daring. I feel like we should be robbing a bank right now and then going surfing because we got no roof. The door is just a little high. Oh no, it's perfect. You gotta get your, that's gangster lean right there. It's just a little high though. That's the look. Because right now my arm's getting shaped on the uh, plasma cutted door seam here. Well, maybe that's the actual problem. Yeah. This car's full of good intentions. Look at that. Really expensive wiring harness. Poorly installed. Big block Chevy, making a lot less power than a big block Chevy. You throw two or three hundred thousand dollars at this thing, man. You have a twenty thousand dollar automobile. Well, we only had to drive 160 miles down to Paso Robles to deliver this car. The first hour of driving this thing actually went pretty well, and then it started to get really hot outside, and naturally the car started to overheat. This thing is gonna puke. Where's the air, Chuck? Where's the water? It's not puking, that scares me even more. We were freaking out at the gauge, like touching 250 when we would stop and going down the freeway at 230, which is way too hot. So we thought it was overheating. We cooled it off. Oh, well there was water in it. Yep. Apparently it wasn't overheating. The gauge just sucks bad. We're gonna let it cool down a little bit more, get the cap off, fill it up with water not crack the block because it's not overheating, and then hit the road again and ignore the gauge. After a bunch of times pulling over, thinking it was overheating, and then maybe it's not, and then trusting the gauge, and then not, we got to like six miles of Jim's Vineyard, and it was obvious this thing was in nuclear meltdown mode. That's hot. That's really hot. Come on, hood. Hey, the hood hinge came undone. Oh, well, that's convenient. Can you grab that bolt out of that pocket there? Does that go right here? That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So the last time we pulled over and the gauge said 240-ish degrees, nothing happened. It actually wasn't that hot. This time, when the gauge said 250, we pulled over and it puked its guts out everywhere. It's a good thing this is one of our shorter trips because this is going to get real old real fast. We're only six miles from where we need to be. So what do we do? Oh, we do what we always do. Take the hood off. That's the obvious fix. <laughs> it doesn't sound happy now that no, I've done that. It does not. Whoa! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Why is it waiting till the very end of the trip for the wheels to come off of this thing? I don't know. I was genuinely concerned about bringing this car to its new owner because he'd never driven it, he'd never really seen it, and it showed up with the hood in the back seat. The Merck's owner was there with his dad and with his little kid. And I'll tell you, any doubts I had about this car melted away immediately because when this guy saw his Merc for the first time, his eyes were just huge. The guy glowed like he couldn't believe it. And he knew the car was rough, but it didn't matter because it made him happy. And best of all, his little kid was bouncing off the walls. That's a father and son driving in their new hot rod. New to them anyway. Look at that. Best day at work ever, right there. Woo! A little chat. Isn't that awesome? Next generation of hot rodder right there. <laughs>